I didn't feel like uh, really building anything today, I'm taking a break, but I thought I'd uh, show you a few of the things that I've had to accumulate um, recently in order to uh, to proceed with this project. Um, some things that I hadn't had before. Um, I have uh, a number of tools that I'd used for um, building um, you know, tables and chairs and boats and things like that. Uh, this is a bit of a different project. So, here we go. Well, this doesn't look very exciting. Um, it is going to be exciting though. Um, this is uh, ground hide glue and it's a glue that you need to uh, mix with water, let it set for a while, then uh, heat it up and um, it, it needs, it's, it's meant for very very tight joints. It doesn't fill gaps uh, at all. So you need uh, almost perfect joints, but it's a very, very strong glue. You can actually uh, glue two boards together that are like an eighth of an inch thick or less, and they'll still hold, um, like, like the front and back of violins. Uh, this, is, this is not very exciting either. This is a little rival uh, cook pot. It's uh, meant for just uh, heating up water, um, and this will be used uh, in lieu of a double boiler for heating up the glue. And inside I've got a little... Uh, glass jar, uh, used to have relish in it, but at any rate, um, in a thermometer so that as I heat it up I can tell what temperature it is. You're supposed to keep the glue, I heat it up slowly to 145 degrees and then not let it get over that. And so uh, with this little system I'll be able to do that. Um, the glue, once it's mixed, um, as long as you keep uh, the jar sealed, can be stored for uh, several weeks, as I understand it. These are a couple of uh, rather pricey gouges. Um, gouge being a chisel with a with a curved blade. Both both of these have what's called an outside bevel, um, which is good for digging out uh, fairly large chunks of wood, and that'll be used for uh, carving the back and uh, maybe some of the work on the the inside with the uh, ribs. This is a set of hand scrapers. Uh, that will be used on the, the finishing up of the, uh, the inside and outside of uh, the, the front and back plates. This is the WorkSharp WS2000. It's a uh, sharpener for, uh, for all kinds of tools. Um, so far I've used it on um, some uh, flat chisels and uh, plain irons and um, a couple of knives and I expect it will uh, also do the job for the the uh, gouges. Um, that's going to be an exciting project uh, probably for sometime in the next couple days because the new gouges that I got um, do not come sharpened. I did show this in a previous video. Uh, this is a uh, what I'm going to be using for um, a bending iron. And it is a, a large soldering iron, um, the type that's used uh, by some for stained glass work. Um, inside of a brass pipe mounted on here with a dimmer switch so I can control how hot it gets or how fast it gets hot. And uh, so we'll be trying that out um, as, soon as, uh, as soon as we're ready to bend the ribs. Uh, this is exciting. This is uh, purfling. A router guide uh, to be used with a Dremel tool. And we'll check that out uh, tomorrow probably with my Dremel tool, make sure it all fits. Now the most exciting thing about today is that some wood arrived. Here's the piece for the neck. I believe this is the maple for the the back. It's cut into uh, you can see it's one piece of wood that's cut almost all the way through. I'll just have to finish the cut here. And I think they do that uh, just so that you know it's all from one one lot. Looks like the spruce or the, the front. What's really kind of uh, surprising and, and exciting, here's the pieces for the sides. I hope there's enough, um, but it's uh, it's also maple and it looks like it may already be cut to dimensions and it's fairly well finished so um, that could make uh, putting the sides together a lot easier than if it had been uh, just rough cut. But we'll have to make some measurements on that to, to make sure. 